Yet another glittering occasion leading up to what promised to be this year's railway mania in the northwest as the 150th birthday of the world's first intercity railway is celebrated. Star of the Titfield Thunderbolt, veteran of several historic cavalcades, beloved of enthusiasts the world over, Lion chuffed up and down the short section of line inside the grounds of the Vulcan works of Rushton Diesels at Newton the Willows, where it's undergone major renovation, ready for the Rainhill trials in May. Then it came to rest for the official ceremony at which it was handed back to its owners, Merseyside County Museums, by the firm's managing director, Mr. John Sword. It gives me great pleasure to present to you, on behalf of the company here, this locomotive, which is the property of your museum in Liverpool. I think, as you know, it's the contribution that we're making to the 150th anniversary of the railways, which is being celebrated this year. We too have been here for 150 years, also building locomotives, so it's entirely appropriate that we should have been involved in this way. It was accepted by the chairman of the county council, Sir Kenneth Thompson. Uh, sir, um, I would like on behalf of the county of Merseyside and of all the people in Merseyside, as well as the much wider area and circle of people who are interested in steam locomotion from its early days to the present, to thank you very much indeed for all the work that's been done to produce this quite beautiful creature here. The last great pageant in which Lyon took part was 50 years ago. It was the centenary of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, and even then in 1930, Lyon was revered. As this film, made at the time, shows, it was still going strong when the latest steam locomotives were on display. Garrett's were then the locos of the future, and thousands of people flocked to discover the secrets of the footplate. One of the great locomotives on show was the last word in express passenger locos, and then only a few years old. The great railway companies sent their famous locomotives to the railway fair, as it was called, at the Wavertree Playground, alongside the LPL London Main Line. The track was put down specially for the event. Visitors could ride the old time railway for one shilling, five pence first class, and half that price third class. There was no second class in those days. Meanwhile, plans for this year's 150th anniversary continue apace with replicas of old engines tested in the original trials nearing completion. Most famous, of course, is the Rocket, winner at the Rainhill trials and commemorated in thousands of lithographs. Less well known are the losers, engines like Novelty, fastest on the day but suspect of a design fault. It had been built in a mere seven weeks and was the first man-made machine to travel at a mile a minute. Another is the Sans Parade, built for £550 by Timothy Hackworth at Shildon in County Durham. The real one is now in the Science Museum in London after an honourable 35-year-old career which ended in 1863. Magical stuff. Love it.